Folks, this special broadcast of AEAC wouldn't have been possible without the support of Air Guns of Arizona, Air Gun Depot, Pyramid Air, and JSB Predator International. And you know the best way to thank them. Hey guys, we're here with uh, Jesse Castor at Crossman. I was walking through their booth and uh, these new spring guns, well, not new, new to us, but these are spring guns that we're all very well versed with, have a new look to them. And so I've asked Jesse to kind of take us through them and let us know what they're doing different. Yeah, so we're real excited to show um, new silencer technology that we're putting on our MP2 mm -hmm. rifles. Right here is our camouflage configuration for our trail rifles. So all the trail MP2s are going to receive this new SBD silencer system. And so what the design intent here with the, with the silencer was, number one, have a market leading silencer for the air gun market, mm -hmm. but then also do it in a way where we could also offer open sight options as well. And so just to get into that a little bit. Yeah. Um, you know, this is, the aesthetic here is a little bit different than your conventional silencer where you just kind of have an oversized tube at the end of a barrel. That's right? what caught my eye right away. Exactly. So what we're, what we're doing here, it's a, an asymmetric or an eccentric design here. And you'll notice the bore of this is not centered with the silencer. Oh, so I the, see. It drops down below. Exactly. So the idea here is how do we maximize the volume to allow our gases to expand to attenuate as much sound as possible mm -hmm. without growing concentrically and occluding our sight picture. Yeah, without destroying that line of sight. Picture, yeah. Or handicapping the consumer by having to mount their optics so high that their bore access and line of sight is so far off that you know makes life a lot harder when you're trying to make sure that you're uh, impacting your target. Yeah, you blows out your trajectory. That's all happened exactly. to us before. Yeah. So, not raising the sight picture, not raising where you're mounting your scope. We're able to offer an open sight configuration with the rear sight here, with a market leading suppressor here. Wow. And so, from an apples to apples comparison. Um, if you were to shoot the same gun, same platform, an MP2 without a silencer, mm -hmm. and compare that to this, you've got about a three-fold improvement. Yeah, that's what I was going to ask you about. Silencer. When you look at the side profile of this silencer, there's a lot of volume there. Are you allowed to disclose like what's going on in here? Or, Absolutely. Because everyone's going to want to know that, I'm sure, as well. Um, so one of the things that's kind of unique, and this is, uh, this is patented, no one's done it before, mm -hmm. is we've actually over-molded to our barrel breech assembly uh, with a glass-filled resin. We're overmolding, uh, this area is overmolded, and the baffles themselves underneath the shroud are overmolded. So it's all one piece. Okay. Um, which also makes cleaning much easier, too. This shroud is aluminum. Uh -huh. This just comes right off. You take the end cap off that has the front sight, take the end cap off, slide your shroud out, and then that exposes this barrel breech assembly. Whoa, that's huge for us baffles. air gunners. I, you know, it's, 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 a common cha it's a common challenge for us guys to, to get, you know, great organizations like Crossman, for example. To, to give us a gun that's easy, not just to shoot, but to maintain, to maintain as well. Right. So for me personally, that's huge because I like to keep my barrels clean and it makes a huge difference. Well, we really just want to, we want to own that user experience. Yeah. We want to help make sure that you're having a good time. Wow. And uh, is this something that we're going to see, Jesse, across all the uh, Crossman brake barrels or more of the Elite line here? So we're, we're focusing on the MP2 platforms right now. Okay. Um, We'll, you'll see some stuff coming from us on our, our lower, more bargain, mm -hmm. uh, more big box stuff. We're mm -hmm. focusing on the MP2 line right now. Okay. Um, so all of the trails that, that we've come out with the last two years, yeah. all the trails will also have an option to be upgraded with this SBD silencer. Okay. We also have the Rogue. Mm -hmm. This is new at SHOT Show. Yeah. We have a traditional stock versus your thumbhole stock that the trail features. Okay. And that includes the new silencer, and we've also offering a new rear sight option there too. So you can have either sight on, a scope on, or use your open sights. Great. Can I grab that? You know, speaking of open sights, uh, you know, it's kind of to your point, I'm seeing one a new sight on here that I haven't seen before. This is ours. We designed this. Okay. Very, very cool. It's just nice to see that so in line with, uh, you know, the top of the barrel and not have that silencer kind of over the top Absolutely. to where you can only scope the rifle. Because a lot of us guys like to shoot open sights, especially you know, in close and not have to fool with the added weight or complexity of the scope. So, you know, that's for me, that's pretty exciting. Right. And especially with an, with an air gun use case, right? It's not a firearm where you're, you've got you know, right. 2,000 feet per second and you're shooting targets that are 100, 200 yards away where yeah. you kind of, you know, you got a little bit more play with your trajectory. Mm -hmm. You know, these are, you know, lower velocity in that realm. 
Wow. Um, so we've got the trails that'll all have the option of an SPD. Okay. We've got the new Rogue. Okay. And then at the top of the line is our new Mayhem, which features a soft touch insert. Mm -hmm. And this is injection molded, soft touch inserts into the stock itself. Mm -hmm. um, of course, the, the new SPD silencer, mm -hmm. rear sight option, and this is also our upgraded scope. So this is a three to nine by 40 with adjustable parallax. Very cool. So this is the, uh, the top tier of our new uh, spring guns. What are you guys doing differently here with, uh, with this molding? Because I'm grabbing this, obviously it's very sticky, but it's not moving around on me at all. Exactly, so what we've done here is, you know, obviously this is a synthetic stock, this is injection molding, the soft touch inserts, this isn't a panel that's just glued in or staked in with plugs. That's, I think that's what I was This is what an actual two-part process. Where okay. The stock itself is injection molded into the tool. Mm -hmm. And then you have another process where you come in with the soft touch material, the soft TPE material, that's actually injected through the inside of the stock out. Wow. And that's what's forming the surface that you have here. Okay. So it's very, very robust. Mm -hmm. uh, if anything was to happen to this, you're not compromising the entire panel. Yeah. You know, if you were to dig at this with your fingers, the only damage would be where you specifically damage it with your fingers, not damage the entire panel. All right. Well, I think what Jesse is getting at is that uh, this isn't something that's going to come apart on us. And I can tell you guys, it feels great. And I love the cut cutting edge look of this uh, of this rifle too. Cool. So Steve, we talked uh -huh. about maintenance, right? Yeah. Maintenance, upkeep. Uh, this is a prototype just to kind of show a cutaway of what's going on under the hood. Mm -hmm. um, so this is, you know, uh, production will be overmolded to the barrel. Okay. So that'll actually be one piece with that barrel breech assembly. Yeah. That overmolding process really locks it on there. So that's okay. not something that's going to come off. It's not something that's going to rattle. Yeah. Create any harmonic effects that are going to either, you know, disrupt the pellet as it's going down your, the barrel during the shot. Yeah. Or, you know, creating more sound uh, harmonics, vibrations. So the way this works, on the gun itself, we have a shroud that'll go over and cover the, these baffles, and then that end cap that's kind of, yep. the end cap secures itself to the shroud. Okay. That's how we're keeping it all together, very simple. Okay. So if you want to ever clean it, you take that end cap off, yep. you take the shroud off, and then you have the baffles exposed. Okay. And so if you want to clean it, you know, a lot of people will use like a filament style or a boar snake style. Mm -hmm. You know, if you're coming in from the breach and going out, you know, this primary expansion port right here gives you generous space. For to be able to do that, sure. Come out. And more than enough space is here, and you know, plenty of angles to get in there and clean each of those baffles. Okay. You yeah, you can tell when you look at something like this. Crossman's obviously put a lot of thought to that. That's just not a couple of baffles and and some soft felt in the right. front, quieting things down. That it, uh, it looks like it's going to work well. You say a, a, about three times quieter? Correct. So apples to apples comparison, uh, same exact firearm with and without. We've got about a 15 decibel difference. Very nice. Well, I'm excited to get my hands on it and try it and. We'll certainly do that for you guys back home. Thanks again. You bet. Cool. Thanks, buddy. You got it, man. So, guys, I was on my way, admittedly, out of the Crossman booth, and I noticed that the Marauder does not look like the Marauders that I have at home. So, I've asked Jesse again to take us through it and let us know what's going on here. You got it. So, this is our new Marauder. It's the Marauder Field and Target Edition. What we've done here is we've taken our award-winning Marauder that everyone knows and loves. Yeah. And what we've done is we've added a regulator to it. <laughs> now, Great. Very apparent, little differentiation when you're looking at it. Regulators under here. Yeah. So of course, what's a regulator do for you? Yeah. It, go ahead. It gives you shot-to-shot -shot velocity, so you're improving your accuracy. Yeah. With already a very accurate, very stable platform. Yeah. Even more so with uh, regulated velocity. You're also getting a lot more shot count. So with the 177, just as a reference point, uh, up to 70 shots at velocity with this regulator. Wow, pretty good. Now, what we're even more excited about, not yeah. just the fact that we're offering this regulator. There's something better than the regulator? The factory, <laughs> is that it's off and on. What? So there's a lot of people that love the Marauder for hunting okay. with an air rifle. Right? Yeah. And of course, when you're regulated, that doesn't come for free from a physics standpoint. You sac you're going to sacrifice your top end velocity okay, sure. to get the number of shots, gotcha. to be regulated, to have that consistent velocity. Yep. If you're someone that primarily wants to hunt or hunting season comes along and you want to take your target rifle, yeah. you, can turn, you can disengage that regulator and now you're back at that high end optimized for velocity. Whoa, let me hit pause right there because that's kind of huge for us hunter guys. So what Jesse's saying is that if, if you want the Marauder to be a regulated gun to where you're maximizing efficiency and shot count so you can have fun plinking, doing the small game thing, you know, what have you, it's got it there for you. But if I understand Jesse right, what he's saying is if I want to take down some bigger cr prey, a larger caliber, I can shut this regulator off for maximum burn? Absolutely. Wow, that's cool. So is the regulator going to be available in all your calibers? 
Uh, it'll be available in the 22 and the 177 calibers. So okay. The 25 caliber Marauder will still be the unregulated version. Okay. Um, and the rationale behind that is, you know, the 25 caliber use case is primarily a hunting use case. Sure. And so you're not really concerned with sacrificing energy to get a higher shot count. Right. And, and you guys do have a good tune. Less. You do exactly. have a nice tune on the 25, I know. I haven't got one at home. And these coming out of the factory, they're actually going to be tuned for the regulator off uh -huh. configuration. Uh, the rationale behind that is that we want to make sure that when you open this up out of the box, that you're going to have the best experience possible. Okay. And so if you are a guy who cares more about that top end velocity mm -hmm. and you're buying the regulator just as an insurance, so maybe later on you want to, you know, compete with us in a field and target event in your neighborhood or something like that. Yeah, okay. So you can have that option for you. But if you're primarily going to be hunting with it, out of the box from the factory, this is going to be tuned. Very cool. And it's basically, it looks like a Gen 2 housing. I don't see really anything terribly different here. Well, what we wanted to do is try and maintain as much of that uh, Marauder aesthetic that everyone okay. already knows. There's a lot of brand recognition, sure. a lot of equity in the Marauder. So we didn't want yeah. to change a whole lot, just enough to where we can offer a little bit more value. Um, and you know, from a value standpoint, I don't think there's anything else in the market that gives you this amount of versatility, mm -hmm. this amount of user configurability in a platform from a factory. No, that's definitely exciting. And cool. The, the goal here is from an act, just be as accurate as we can out of the box. If you want to compete in a field target, this is the one to go to. Well, and is that standard or is that going to be an option? Or are they all going to be built that way, except for the 25? Uh, except for the 25. So we're not, this is not going to um, replace the Marauder. The Marauders that we currently have that are unregulated okay. still exist in the market. Okay. They're going to be in the portfolio. Okay. This is just another addition. So for the guy that, or gal that wants, is okay to spend a little bit more money and get a little bit more, it's now there for you. Amen. And it's really not that more. So the MSRP on this is 619. Great. It's a good, it's a good value. Awesome. Jesse. Thanks again, buddy. Really appreciate it. your time. You've been great.